What is going on, YouTube? It's Pete coming in hot with another video, also known as that guy Pete. You just refuse to invite to gatherings. Very hot. Very, very hot today. And today, we are here to talk about money. So, when I say we're here to talk about money, probably noticed for the past two days, I've uh, been dropping some white pill, post-acceptance, self-improvement type content. So today, we're here specifically to talk about money, this idea of money maxing. Once again, I do got us another acronym. So some of these are going to just kind of be words that part of the flow of the sentence, um, while some of them are actually going to be the letters like the acronym itself that spells a word. So the acronym, or rather the phrase I came up with, is girls get, G-E-T, on the C-C, and the Fed, F-E-D, goes B-R-R-R, and the men sail for F, foreign shores. So just repeat that. We're here to talk about Girls get on the CC and the Fed goes brrr and the men sail for foreign shores. That's how we're going to remember it. <clears throat> okay, so we have a total of 13 items to discuss today. Ooh. All right. So very much like I've been doing for the past couple of days, we're going to go through each item and give my thoughts on it, so on and so forth. Um, give examples, I guess, where it's relevant. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of take it from there. So what are we talking about when we're talking about money maxing? Well, wealth maxing, different ways to get money. Now, some of these ways um, I'm not going to talk about, like working a nine to five or something like this, because that's just, yeah, no shit. You could work a job. That's a way to make money. It's not what we're talking about today. What we're here to talk about today is uh, more, I guess, passive ways or unconventional ways to make money. Okay. So the first item after girls is the G in get. Gambling. Gambling is a way to make money. And if you're very good at gambling, you could be a poker champion. You could kill it at the casino. Make it big on the scratchy lotteries. Bet on the ponies, the dog races, their social gambling, so on and so forth. Now, this one, not much really needs to be said. It's essentially luck maxing, right? It's all down to luck. Lady luck is either on your side or she's not. In the case of poker, it's all about how good you can bluff. Playing a poor hand well. So, obviously, it's not a viable way to get wealthy. But, nevertheless, it is a way to get wealthy. Let's move on to the second one. E, enterprise. So enterprise is this idea of going into business yourself, being self-employed, starting your own business. For those of you who do not know, uh, you could register with the Secretary of State, start your own LLC. You could start an INC, which is a corporate entity. You could have shareholder agreements. You could have owner agreements, like operating agreements. You could have articles of incorporation, all these things, okay? And with that, you can get an official business on paper. And there's different things you could do. For example, you could do an e-commerce business. As someone who works in taxes, I definitely run into my fair share of e-commerce type outfits where they take these courses on how to have an Amazon business, how to have an eBay business, and stuff like this. Very common. Um, I'm also seeing a large increase in online type services from A to Z. Everything is done online. You don't have to meet up with anyone in person. You can just get on a website, use a fintech, which is like a financial tech, like a software where you can just kind of go through it from A to Z and complete your service. You can also have products. You make products and sell them online. Um, royalties. Maybe you wrote a book. You get royalties. That's part of business. You could be a creator. Maybe you do a YouTube type thing. Maybe um, 
you're a content creator. Um, you know, uh, brick and mortar, good old fashioned retail outlet, or you could be an independent contractor. The point is that when it comes to enterprise, there's a lot of different avenues you can take. So if there's something that you have a natural knack for, such as, you know, uh, carpentry or, uh, you know, teaching music, whatever it is, why not turn into a business model and make money off of it? That's the idea of enterprise and working for yourself. That kind of really gives you the drive because there's a lot at stake. It's not a bad way to build wealth, especially if you have a great idea. Third way to build wealth and preserve wealth is T tax planning. In short, know your deductions, know your credits and how to plan effectively to keep more in your pocket. So when it comes to um, saving money on taxes, deductions and credits is the name of the game. Deductions, as I said in a video about income statement and balance sheet a while back, should also be in this playlist. Um, I said essentially that deductions are whatever your percent tax rate is, you're saving that much cents on every dollar you deduct while a credit is a dollar for dollar reduction. So credits are designed to give you incentive to uh, do certain things like buy a Tesla or install solar panels. Um, while tax deductions are just valid expenses for business in your enterprise, for example. The point is know the tax law because you can use the tax law to your advantage to save money. Less money in the IRS's pocket means more money as a part of your wealth, which is good. You want that. And that's it for get. So that was pretty easy. So girls, they get on the what? They get on the CC, of course, for 10 years straight. The first C is crypto. So for those who have been paying attention for the past 10 years or so, something like that, cryptocurrency has been getting big. I even did a video about the orange pill in the medicine cabinet, which essentially gives you the basics of crypto. It doesn't tell you everything about crypto, but it gives you enough like the core of the orange pill philosophy and kind of what it's all about and how it's going to become relevant in the future. But in terms of building wealth with crypto, there's different things that you can do with it. You could trade it. You could speculate on it. You could stake it. Um, staking it is like basically locking it up and allowing it to accrue interest. To think of it like a CD, but for crypto, you could yield farm it. So yield farming might be a term that you've heard. If you're unfamiliar with what yield farming is, the idea essentially is that you're loaning your crypto out to other people and you get interest. And um, there is what's called DeFi, which is decentralized finance. Uh, those types of um, places where they engage in DeFi called uh, DEX, which is a decentralized exchange. You can go and do things like this where you can loan out your crypto, perhaps to a speculator who's looking to short a crypto, perhaps, because I don't know if you know when you go to like short a stock you borrow it from a broker the middleman um and then you go and you sell it high you wait for it to drop you buy it back cheap give it back to the broker and then you pocket the difference and that's shorting so basically yield farming is this idea of hey i'm gonna lend you these cryptos you're gonna give me back the um the interest when you're done that's how i make money it's a pretty good way to make money actually from what i've seen um i'll shout out to a channel uh Max Mayer, M-A-H-E-R. Check him out. He's actually pretty cool. Um, so yeah, good channel. And um, essentially, yeah, you're basically just generating interest off of loaning out cryptos, which is pretty cool. So that's something you could do. You could trade it like a stock or a security, even though it's technically property. You could tra trade it like a stock and trade it. You could hold it, play it long instead of playing it short. And even now they have crypto IRAs. I think the company is Alto. It's essentially an IRA where you can buy and sell crypto within it, which means that any gains on it, it's in a pre-tax account. It's deferred until you withdraw, which obviously is good. And I think there's a, we mentioned this, there's an ETF fund as well. So it's kind of like a mutual fund. It's like a pool of investors. You don't invest in the cryptos themselves. You invest in a fund that's backed by crypto. So you kind of get in on the action without getting your hand too close to the stove. Um, so to speak and it's pretty cool because this blockchain technology now you're seeing smart contracts too which kind of ties into this whole DeFi thing but now it's going to be like a, a decentralized legal system as well where again you don't need all these intermediaries and middlemen 
I kind of feel bad because the brokers and the lawyers, eventually, they might lose their jobs if the blockchain can replace it. I don't think we're going to be there anytime soon. I think maybe maybe not lawyers because you need lawyers to still understand the law, but the blockchain is going to do a lot of the, the busy work with smart contracts, which is going to be very interesting as that takes off. The point is you could do a lot with crypto and build a lot of wealth. You could, you could, um, you could, like I said, you could buy it, you could sell it, you could hold it, you could trade it, you can yield farm it and basically lend it out to people. You could stake it, like shove it in a, in a CD type vehicle. Or if you don't want to touch it, you can go to ETF. And now they even got it where you can use crypto to plan for retirement if you want. If you really believe in going into the moon that much. But we haven't really believed in that since like, you know, the 1970s. The other C is collectibles. So collectibles are things like antiques. I want you to think of like furniture, old gun models and things like this. Vinyls, old records, comic books, coin collections, classic cars, um, trading cards, like baseball cards, um, dolls, toys, action figures, stamps, wine, art, jewelry, and more recently, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which are basically one-of-a-kind digital signatures associated with a piece of art, a picture, a meme, or something like this. And no matter how many copies of it are on the internet in terms of like pictures that look like it, the digital signature associated with the original is yours. Think of it as you have the digital Mona Lisa. Yeah, you can take a picture of it, but it's not the same. The digital code, the underlying ones and zeros are unique and it's yours. It's a pretty cool new way to kind of digitize collectibles. Of course, nothing beats an actual physical like, you know, comic book or a statuette or something like this. Pretty remarkable, though. And naturally, if you're the kind of person who's a bit of a collector and you you trade collectibles, you buy collectibles, this is an excellent way to accumulate wealth. And also art makes for pretty good talking pieces, though it is kind of funny to imagine a guy who owns the Neon Cat, the actual NFT, the original, and he has it on his television. He's like talking about it with his friends by a fireplace. That That's the future of us, huh? And that's pretty much for the CC in terms of building wealth. Then we say, OK, girls, they get on the CC. And then what happens when all the Chad Green buys happen? What happens when someone's got to bail them out? Well, the Fed shows up. And the Fed. F is for fiat. We're talking about dollars. We're talking about euros. We're talking about pounds, yen. We're talking about Chinese yuan. We're talking about rubles. What can you do with all this stuff? Well, you could put it in a savings account, a money market account. You could put it in CDs. These things have different interest rates and different things you could do with them. But the basic gist is that by putting them into these accounts, looking at the interest rates, you can grow money off of your money. This is a very old school way of doing it. But I got a lot of clients who they do have some money sitting in these types of accounts and they're generating interest. And obviously, the more money you have in the account, the more interest you get. But um, just don't be surprised if this is a very slow burning way to build wealth. But obviously, you got to diversify. And I think it's like 250 grand is insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Commission, which basically means if, if shit hits the fan, your bank account is insured 250 grand by the federal government. Which, you know, this isn't that bad. Okay. So that is fiat. Next is a really big one E, estate and life planning. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about trusts, I'm talking about wills, I'm talking about life insurance. I'm talking about HSAs, 529s, things like this. What the hell is all this shit? Well, you know what a will is, right? We talk about it all the time. We talked about a story where um, a guy found out his wife was cheating, right? And um, he was dying. And she was all smug about it. Like, yeah, I'm banging this alpha seed behind your back, you beta cuck. Uh. And uh, he wasn't having that shit, so he met with the lawyer, got the will changed at the last minute so that only his kids get it. The the ex-wife was going to get nothing. And um, she found out after he died, and she got nothing. Hilarious. And I think the kid helped him plan it, too. Hilarious. So, obviously, wills are an excellent way to control your wealth. 
so that if you pass your wealth on to your kids, your legacy, your progeny, a will is an excellent way to make sure that the people who are supposed to get the things that you want them to get actually get those things when things go to probate and they try to figure out who gets what. And trusts are also very important. There's different types of trusts, of course. Generally revocable and irrevocable are the two most common ones. Revocable generally means uh, I can cut the strings. I can take it back. Irrevocable means usually when I die that you can't take it back because you're dead or you made it irrevocable from day one. The point is it's an excellent way to separate your assets from yourself so that if you were ever in divorce court or something, I think we talked about this way back in one of the divorce videos, the domestic asset protection trusts, DAPs, excellent way to protect your wealth. So obviously part of wealth building is protecting your wealth. You have to know how to do that. This goes for life insurance policies as well. Okay. Be very careful who you put on your life insurance policies. You ever hear those stories of like, you know, the husband's at dinner, he takes a sip of his wine, he's like, Ugh, and then she gets a payout on the life insurance policy. That's a joke, but it's definitely happened before. So the idea is, you know, obviously life insurance is definitely, you know, you want to make sure that people you care about get taken care of, but you definitely want to make sure also that people you are, uh, you doubt care about you, they don't get their hands on that type of stuff. So yeah, trusts, wills, life insurance, very, very important stuff. It's a huge part of wealth. When you have a lot of money, as they say, more problems. And you need to plan out the flow of where shit goes. Because remember, if you don't plan this stuff out, the state gets it. Right? So basically, in death, your money funds all these shitty programs. Like Planned Parenthood and Welfare and Section 8 and all that great stuff that, um, you know, feminism brought. Okay? HSAs. This one's easy, right? An HSA essentially is a pre-tax account. I want you to think of it similar to a retirement account, but basically you put the money in, you get to deduct it on your taxes, so you pay no tax on this money. It grows, you pay no taxes on the growth as long as you take the money out and use it for your medical expenses. You got health insurance, fantastic, but what if you don't have dental and optical? Boom, use the HSA. Bear in mind, though, you can only have an HSA if you have a high deductible health plan. Low deductible health plan, you cannot. And the other thing is 529. If you have kids, uh, chances are when you put the money away, you will get a pre-tax deduction on the state level. But at the federal level, it will grow tax-free. And as long as you pull the money out for qualified education, be it primary, secondary, or college education, you're good. Basically, you could pay for your kid's school with a 529 plan. So theoretically, as, as you see, kind of see the gears rolling, you know, I, I was reading a story about a guy where he, um, he, whatchamacallit, he was doing some yield farming with cryptos. And he made a lot of interest in a period of about six months. He made enough to like cover his kid's tuition for like two years or something. He cashed out into fiat and then put the fiat into the 529 to get the state deduction. It grew tax free a little bit more and then he paid for his kid's school that way. So when you're using all these different pieces together, you could see how you get a well oiled machine that just builds wealth. Last is D, debt management. So debt management is very, very important. We've been talking about assets up until this point, but again, you have to manage your liabilities too. And there's ways to do it. Consolidation is one way. It's not uncommon for people to get a cheaper loan to pay off more expensive loans. I know people where they had very high interest business loans. They took out cheaper business loans from the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and then they used those loans with the lower interest rate to pay back the higher interest rate loan so that the higher interest rate didn't keep accruing. And thus they saved money on the difference that they would have been stuck with had they not gotten that loan. That's an example of debt consolidation. Debt restructuring is just a simply renegotiating terms of debt. You probably want to meet with a finance person, but I'm just saying, you don't ask, you don't get. Even in the world of taxes, we have what's called an offer and compromise. If you have shitloads of money and it's like, yo, I realistically can't afford this, the IRS will work with you and say, all right, well, what do you bring in? What do you spend? Like, what's going on? And then you make an offer and you can save a lot of money that way. They'll be fair about it, but obviously don't abuse that. 
But the point is you can you can restructure your debt to get a better outcome by renegotiating. And a big one is refinancing. So refinancing is an excellent way to save money, basically replacing old debt with new debt. And um, yeah, ideally at a cheaper rate, you can use refinancing to pull money out of your your equity. So if you need cash, you could use that and refinance one house to take the cash and then go buy another property. You could do something like this. Um, or you can refinance just to get a lower rate. Maybe you have a 30 year mortgage at 10%. You can now you're eligible for a 15 year mortgage at, you know, 7%. Well, if you refinance, you just shaved all those years off your mortgage and the rate is now lower. And if you can afford to make the same exact payment that you were making back when you had the 30 year mortgage, you're shaving off all that money and saving it. So obviously that's something you can do too in terms of managing debt. But of course, despite everything I just said to you, the best way to manage debt is to avoid it when possible. I graduated with my three degrees um, and I have been debt free. I have no debt. That is a blessing and I'm thankful for it every day because it's gonna make it much, much easier for me to plan financially for my future. So next, that's it for Fed. But what does the Fed do when the girls are done on the CC? Well, they go to the printer, and the printer goes, <laughs> So let's begin with B. B is for brokerage account. So what is a brokerage account? Essentially, it's an investment portfolio. What could be in this investment portfolio? Stocks, notes, also known as loans, bonds, interest, dividends, derivatives, which could be, um, you know, forward contracts, future cr contracts, uh, swaps, exotics, etc. So forwards, futures, and swaps, you know, it could be depending on the type of agreement. Basically, uh, you could have a forward rate, a spot rate, things like this. And depending on the terms of the agreement, you decide, hey, um, this is what's going on on the two sides of the contract. And at this specified date, we're going to have this sort of transaction occur in the future. Um, or we could swap, change our positions. You have an option to do that, so on and so forth. And depending on which position in the contract you took, you either win or you lose. Both guys are going into the contract thinking that they're going to win and have a good return on the investment. But by necessity, somebody loses, depending on how the market goes. Right? But these contracts are usually backed by something. They're derivatives. They're derived from something else, and it can be derived from anything. An example is an exotic derivative. An example of an exotic derivative is derivative tied to weather. That's right. You could buy a derivative that's tied to how the weather is going to play out, to how energy is going to play out. It's insane, the types of things that you could theoretically bet money on on Wall Street. Um, but yeah, it's real. You can also have options in a brokerage. You could have annuities in a brokerage. Uh, you could have mutual funds, ETFs, commodities, index funds, partnership interests. Pretty much, you name it, it's in there. Right? It's all in there. So, yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Now, the first R of three R's is real estate. So, we just talked about um, we just talked about refinancing, how you could pull equity out of one house to go buy another one. So obviously, this is a big choice you have to make as an individual, whether or not you want to own other properties besides your primary residence. There is nothing more illiquid than real estate, but on the same token, there's a lot of money to be made in real estate. And uh, a common thing that a lot of the wealthiest people do, this is free game for you, so to speak, in, in real estate. What they'll do is they'll they'll buy a property, right? They'll be collecting money from the tenant, paying off the house, and at some point, they'll refinance the, the property, right? And they'll pull the money out and then go buy another property and then do the same thing. Refinance, pull them out, go do the same thing, go do the same thing. And if they decide to sell any of the properties, they're going to do what's called a 1031 exchange. A 1031 exchange is basically this. Hey, normally if I sell an investment property, there's a sales price, there's a cost. 
There's probably some depreciation recapture. Maybe if I do a tax video, I'll talk about that. It just means you got to write off some stuff before. I'm not going to let you get a tax benefit later. So we have to recapture that and it's going to hit you now. Okay, whatever. The point is you can put off that gain that you would have paid taxes on by rolling it over into another property. So let's say I sell one property. The rule is within 45 days of selling, I got to identify three replacement properties. And within six months from when I sell, I have to buy one of those three properties. And I have to have a qualified intermediary help me do this. If I successfully pull this off, that is a 1031 exchange. So basically, I pay no tax. Instead, the gain that I would have paid tax on reduces the basis in the new property and puts off my capital gain. So imagine if I kept refinancing, pulling out equity to go buy new properties. And then when I sell properties, yes, I pay off my debt, but I also 1031 my trade so that I don't pay tax. You can get very wealthy that way. Yep. And there's also what's called a, um, a Delaware trust where basically you can get in on pools of investment properties. Yep. That's a big one, too. It's kind of like a mutual fund of real estate type deal. That's a big thing. Absolutely. So that's definitely something worth um, thinking about as well. And naturally, everything I've talked about here, you could do it with residential properties. You could do it with commercial properties. And, you know, th there's no shortage of people I talk to that they take those real estate classes, those very expensive real estate classes because they want to know the ins and outs. But when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, it's not it's not particularly complicated. Most people that I deal with in the manosphere, they're fairly intelligent, fairly educated people. They could probably figure this stuff out. But that's pretty much real estate in a nutshell. It's a little more complicated than that, but just understand real estate's an excellent way to build wealth. Excellent way to build wealth. Next is rewards, as in credit card rewards. So when you use a credit card, Obviously, pay your credit card, have a good credit score, because then it's easier for you to secure lending and things like this as well. But when you use a credit card, you generate rewards, cash back, points to go and buy things, maybe get gift cards, stuff like this. And there's also travel rewards that can help you pay for your travel and things like this. Go, go see the world on the bank's dime, essentially. If you are smart with credit cards, Again, you can pay for your leisure on somebody else's money. It's as simple as that. And if you are doing cash back and you just need cash, you could take the cash from the points to put it in your bank account, pay off a credit card balance, something like this. The point is somebody else is putting up the money so that you don't have to. So why not take advantage of that so that you don't have to dip into your wealth? And the third R is retirement accounts. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about IRAs. I'm talking about simple IRAs. I'm talking about SEP IRAs, 401ks, and defined benefit plans. Okay? Pretty much in that order, the amount of money you can contribute to each one goes up and up and up and up and up. IRAs are about seven grand. Simple IRAs are about 13.5. SEP IRAs are about 58 grand. 401ks are broken up between, um, I think it's it's 19.5 for the employee contribution and 38.5 for the employer, which also equals 58. But as you can see, there's an employee and employer breakdown. And then defined benefit plans could be like 230 grand or something like that. Some of these plans have what's called self-directed variants. A very common one is the self-directed IRA, often also known as the checkbook IRA. Essentially, the IRA of this type allows you to invest in things that you wouldn't conventionally use an IRA for, such as cryptos, like we mentioned with Alto, or you can use an IRA to invest in real estate. A common question I get is, can an IRA be an owner of a real estate property? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Absolutely. But the point is, a like a traditional type deal where, you know, you're working for somebody else and you have this account, a little bit less control of what's actually in the retirement account versus a self-directed 
account where you have a lot more control of what's in there. And then, of course, the other thing is to consider is traditional versus Roth in retirement. So traditional basically means this. I put money in today. I don't pay tax today. It grows. When I take the money out, then I pay tax. When would you want to do this? If you think that in the future, you're going to be making less money, therefore have a lower tax rate later than you would today. That is most people. So most people have a traditional. But there is also a Roth variant of IRAs and 401ks. What does this do? Hey, no, 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 no. I'm going to pay the tax today. Cool. But the money is going to grow. And then when I take the money out, it's tax free. The earnings are tax free versus the traditional where they are not tax free. When would I want to do this? I would want to do this when I am anticipating a higher tax bracket later. Yep. That's when I would do that. So as you can see, your investments are important. If you want to get into real estate, it's a great way to make money. Take advantage of your credit card rewards and never forget to plan for your retirement. That's important too. And again, you can use crypto or fiat as your main um, vehicle to build that retirement, to build your future financially. Personally, I recommend not putting all your eggs in one basket. Play on both of the ponies. Okay. The world is your oyster and technology is evolving every day. There is no shortage of new ways to build wealth if you see the opportunities. Now, the printer has gone. <laughs> the men feel a certain way about that. So what do the men do? And the men sail for foreign shores. F as in foreign. Forex. So up until this point, I've told you, you can trade in cryptos. You can trade in stocks, notes, bonds, derivatives. In, you can collect dividends and interest. You can get annuities, options, mutual funds, um, index funds, ETFs, commodities like gold and silver, oil and natural gas. You could have interest in partnerships, publicly traded partnerships, PTPs. But you could also trade in foreign currencies. Just as you can trade in cryptocurrencies, you could trade in foreign currencies. Right? There's opportunities to make money there. If I think one currency is going to get stronger relative to another currency then I can trade the currencies in such a way where I can recognize a gain in value simply by trading currencies. Uh, this is probably something that um, most people don't do. Uh, it's my understanding that there's a lot of like watching closely because arbitrage opportunities are very rare. Arbitrage is basically this idea like, hey, there's a window where if I jump in here and I start buying and selling, I can make a lot of money, but naturally over time that window closes and as a result, the opportunity is gone. But just wanted to make it clear that yes, Forex is a valid investment just like the rest. So yes, foreign currencies is a way to make money and build wealth if you know what you're doing. Okay. And that is pretty much everything I've got on money. So what did we talk about today? We talked about girls getting on the CC. And when they get on the CC and they're done, the fiat goes brrr, and the men sail for foreign shores. Ways to build wealth. What are we talking about? We're talking about gambling. We're talking about enterprise, starting your own business. We're talking about tax planning. Take advantage of the tax code. Use it to your advantage, right? We're talking about crypto. We're talking about collectibles like NFTs and antiques and paintings. Yeah, it pays to have a um, to have an eye for art and things like this. Yeah, um, you know, fiat currencies. Investing them in the correct types of accounts to maximize growth. Never forgetting that, hey, even after you're gone, you can't take your money with you. So make sure the people you care about get it. And not some random schmucks who step forward out of Bumblefuck, Kentucky. Estate and life planning. Very important. Debt management. You don't want to be in debt up to your eyeballs. So you have to manage your debt effectively. Okay? Having a brokerage account. Not a bad way to build wealth. Getting into real estate. 
if you've gone through all the other levels, right? You've been through fiat, you've been through crypto, you've been through the brokerage accounts and all the different types of investments. You're starting to amass wealth and you want to invest it in stuff. Something that's never going to lose value, it's going to go up in value. Real estate, it's a great thing to invest in. Taking advantage of credit card rewards. Never forgetting that, hey, you're going to get old someday. You want to have some money stashed away, plan for retirement. And if you want to dabble in a little bit of foreign currencies, hey, Forex is the place to go. Okay? So money maxing is very important. Just as status maxing is very important, just as looks maxing is very important, just as game maxing is very important. And of course, you know, maxing in all skills in life. Okay? And that is for real what I've got. So feel free to leave a like on this. Feel free to leave a dislike. If you think I'm an asshole, tell me I'm an asshole. Tell me why I'm an asshole. Leave a comment. It's cool. If you have a topic, an idea that you think, hey, Pete, I think you should talk about this. Perhaps I'll make a video on it. Maybe it's worth talking about. But whatever you do, don't report the video. It's good information. It helps people. If you like the content, though, hit subscribe. If you don't and you are a subscriber, it's cool if you unsubscribe. I won't take it personally. I might even still like you as a person. We just disagree on things. It is what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, we're here to stop men from self-deleting. We want them to self-improve. We want them to see that there are other things in life that they should be focusing on. We want to give them access to this information. And my goal is to kind of give a comprehensive video library where they can access this information whenever they need it. And if women are watching, hopefully they learn something of value here that can help them improve themselves and make life a little bit easier for them and how they interact with men. As always, I have been that guy, Pete. You refuse to invite to gatherings. I'll definitely catch y'all for the next one. But for now, I'll see y'all later.